Hey everybody, welcome to another video. This video is going to be uh, helping people with DX6i transmitters connect, uh, sort of connect to the uh, Horizon Hobby Carbon Cub S Plus. So I had um, a lot of very frustration, confusion, uh, trying to get this thing set up. Um, anyway, but uh, I'll save that for possibly other videos. What I want to talk about today, the most important thing is uh, which switches do what on your DX6i? Because, you know, this is kind of an older transmitter, um, but this is this is just the one that I have, and I really wanted to make it work with this thing. Uh, so first of all, you will not be able to use your flaps with this transmitter because the flaps require uh, a seven-channel transmitter. This is only six. Um, <clears throat> now, okay, so that covers the flaps. You can't have flaps. It's a bummer, I know, but that's that's the way it is. So... Um, the other thing that was really confusing to me is which switches do what, and basically, okay, so in the manual, alright, so here in the manual, which is like a very hefty manual, very confusing for beginners, anyway, um, the, uh, so they say set uh, gear to switch, well that doesn't really, because they're talking about other transmitters, but basically they're saying you're, we're using the gear switch and we're using the aux one switch, the gear switch is going to be to uh, cycle between flight modes like, um, well, b beginner, intermediate, and uh, expert and then aux one it uh it, that channel is going to be for um the gps like system okay so so then they so later they refer to you know for to these two to do various uh these two switches to to do actuate various different modes and whatnot so basically <clears throat> what they're talking about here is this is the gear switch okay but You'll notice this is a two position switch, not a three position. So without, well, I'll say the easiest way to do it and what I'm doing is I'm just having this be noob mode, which is your beginner mode. And then this is going to be mad skills mode or expert mode. Uh, so that's this switch right here um, as, the, as the default, I believe. It should be, I think. At least for me it was. And then this switch right here, okay, you'll notice this is the flap switch, but this is aux one in the transmitter. And so uh, when they say to hold down the the uh, the uh, holding pattern slash auto land slash bind button, well, forget about the bind because this is actually your bind button on this transmitter. So just ignore it when they talk about the bind button for uh, for for this um, in this instance. So, except for when you're actually binding. Anyway, um, so here, so the, so here I've labeled this is the normal position, which is down. Okay, that's important. And then when you switch it up, you, that's so like if they so like I ha, I, I wrote down on here because it's so confusing. Um, if I want to do a holding pattern, I put this up for one second, and then bring it back down. If I want to do auto land, where it actually returns to home and lands, then I leave it up for one, two, three and then I bring it back down. Okay, so those are the two things, the flaps and the switches. Here's the next thing that I want to uh, talk about that was extremely confusing to me and I did a lot of troubleshooting um, just to figure out that it's actually a pretty simple solution. So I plugged the battery in, I have the transmitter going. Now what's going on here, you'll notice that I have this switch in the normal position, okay? You want that in the normal position so that it says, hey, I'm looking for a uh, GPS uh, satellites. You want to make sure that this switch is in the normal position, otherwise it will not look for satellites uh, because it thinks that, well, it basically it thinks that it's not supposed to because it's not in the normal position. And again, that could be up or down depending on whether the aux one channel is reversed or not in your transmitter. All right, and we are back. I took this guy outside so it could get a lock on the GPS stuff. Now, when it's in, so once it has a lock on the GPS, you know, it does its little thing and the elevator stops going up and down. Um, so at this point, okay, so at this point, I would think that it, it w should work just fine. But what you'll you'll find that what happens is when you uh, bring your, your throttle just to about half throttle, it starts pulsing the motor. <laughs> Like so. Even if you put it higher, it'll pulse it, and you'll get more thrust, but it'll still pulse it. 
and I was extremely confused. I thought it was like low voltage cutoff on the ESC or something was defective. But it turns out all you actually have to do is, and it says so in the manual, but there's like so much going on there that it's hard to understand that. So what you do is you leave it, let me just leave it up. What does that do? There we go. It's like doo 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 doo, and it starts dancing. All the surfaces move. And again, depending on which ones move, it'll tell you what, what like pattern mode thing it's in. Oh, it's so much to remember. I can't imagine a beginner like being able to remember this. I haven't even flown this thing yet. Maybe it flies great. I don't know. Anyway, so, and then you put your switch back down to the normal position, okay? Then you are ready to fly. And this way, if in flight you want to do holding pattern or auto land or whatever else this switch does, that is when you hold it up for one second or three seconds or whatever. So that is how it works. So now we'll do a check. Oh, and by the way, just 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 so you know, I mean, don't do this with your propeller on. I mean, but look, it's going to happen anyway. You're probably going to do it with your propeller on. So just be very, very mindful of your propeller. Keep your fingers and toes and eyeballs away from the propeller. Um, and always make sure to hold down the airplane whenever you're doing a throttle check and also keep you know cats and babies away from it all right you, you know that stuff but it, it bears to be reminded okay here we go yay and now you are ready to rock and roll i think i mean i think that that should be it so at least that fixes the pulsing problem now you know which switches they're talking about in the manual and you can kind of translate that to the dx6i and you just don't have any flaps because it takes seven channels. You need an extra aux channel. This is aux one, you need an aux two. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this helped somebody out there who got one of these and you're so confused. I know I was. Uh, stay tuned for more videos and if you wanna see more about the uh, Carbon Cub S Plus, uh, please let me know because I think I'll be doing some more trying out with this. Honestly, right now, as far as the setup, it's not looking so hot for the beginner. Because I've been I've been doing RC stuff for like eh, a little over a year now. I'm not an expert or anything like that, but this is definitely not my first airplane, um, and it was confusing me. There's so much to remember. What is okay? You know that's that. We'll save that for another video. Other videos. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped. Bye. If you want to disable GPS mode, okay, like it says in the manual, it says to hold down. Well, it, it says hold down this button, and then toggle your mode button. So let's give that a try. <clears throat> so we're going to push this up and then one, two, three. And then it does a little wiggle jiggle. I, I don't know if you can see that, but the, the rudder jiggled. And then it's like, hey bro, uh, you don't have um, GPS anymore. Okay, so here we go. We're in the menu. I'm going to go down to, I'm going to go all the way to setup list. Um, Monitor. So this is just for your future reference. This will show you which switches uh, and, and ch well, really what channels you're using. So this is, see on the top, we have the throttle. It's kind of hard to follow these on the video, I know. But you got the, you have these little, these little triangles, okay? But the important thing is here, the gear switch, when I switch that, you see that one? It moves. Channel 5. I'm getting some bad reflection, but channel 5 moves. So channel 5 is connected to the gear switch, basically. And aux, you can see here, just to confirm, is connected to this switch. Now, see, in the manual they say, um, they say make sure that aux one is not reversed. Well, in this particular case, it doesn't matter because it's just a switch that you can have either up or down and it will stay there. What they're talking about is if you have a switch that's like this, like a button, uh, this is actually, I turned this into my timer, so that's why it's beeping. But if you have a button type switch, that means that normally it's going to be in the off position. It's going to be spring-loaded to off. Anyway, 